All right, everyone, this is going over the APA ethical guidelines that exist within any form of psychological research. Um, the reason for it is because of kind of what happened during the Stanford prison experiment, when you had an experiment that went out of control to the point that you had you know, literal abuse, physical abuse going on, um, as well as you know emotional, psychological, those types of things. And the very people who were supposed to keep track of the situation and keep it from going out of control, they actually got sucked into it at all or got sucked into it as well. Because even like uh, Philip Zimbardo, who was in charge of the Stanford prison experiment, he even said that there was a point where he stopped being a professor and he actually became a warden. And because of that, as well as some other incidences that had kind of happened before that, um, the, these guidelines were put down to make sure that things did not go off the rails again. So the parties involved is uh, really there's two. Um, first, you have the American Psychological Association, and this is the kind of big association that all of psychology uh, pretty much answers to. Um, and what they do is they establish the overall ethical guidelines in order to conduct any kind of research. Below them, you have the different institutional review boards. And these are kind of the people who handle the day-to-day -day oversight of research. So pretty much how it goes is if somebody wants to come uh, perform any kind of psychological research, they have to submit it to the board and they have to look at it. They look it over to make sure everything's okay. And they're the ones who ultimately give permission. And they're the ones who can ultimately, they can shut down any kind of research that's happening midway through if anything kind of funny seems to kind of show up in the research. But uh, these are found in pretty much all institutions that do research. So like colleges, universities, uh, private uh, research facilities, those types of things, they're all required to have an IRB uh, to make sure that they're not uh, violating any ethical standards. So when it comes to animal research, because animal research is used, um, pretty, much, pretty much how it goes down is you need an animal that can meet a clear, clear, specific, scientific purpose. Um, and it must answer an important question, not, you know, what would happen if I took, you know, put electrodes up to the kitty cat's ears? Um, no, that's not gonna work. You know, it needs to actually be legit research, not just, you know, torturing just for the sake of torturing. Um, animals must be best suited to answer the question. So, Again, this is one of the reasons why actually mice are used a lot for drug testing, for example, because how they respond physiologically to medications, a la side effects, um, humans are very, they, they respond a lot like how humans would. Um, they must be cared for. <laughs> you can't just treat them horribly. Um, animals must be acquired legally and wild animals must be captured humanely and in general you must cause the least amount of suffering possible so yeah you have you gotta kind of take care of that and yes that is a very kind of vague statement so again it's one of those things where uh, like for example when i was at uh, when i was in college um u of h was doing a uh, study involving nicotine addiction and they were using monkeys for it. And what happened was one of the monkeys died <laughs> during the study. <laughs> and what happened was they actually shut down the research temporarily and did this huge, big investigation where they were, they checked the uh, conditions of the facility. They checked, you know, the diet. They pretty much gave all the monkeys a physical. They went through all the paperwork. It was... Pretty much they were audited <laughs> it was and eventually it was uh you know everything was above board the monkey just died of because it was old 
not because it would have been smoking cigarettes, uh, but um, but again, it was conceivably it could have been shut down because of it, and that's the kind of things that the IRB can do. And then when it comes to human research, in in short, no coercion. You cannot kidnap somebody off the street, throw them in a box, and psychologically torture them. Can't do that. Um, no coercion. Only volunteers. Um, informed consent. Participants know what's going on, and um, they have to give their consent. Usually, they'll fill out a lot of paperwork. Anonymity, confidentiality is protected, no matter what. Um, in fact, even in the uh, official documentation, your your name should not throw up, show up. So, like for example, if you're a part of a study. Um, and they're going to like refer to you in the study. They give you a code name, John Doe, Jane Doe, subject number 23. Um, and again, the idea is to protect the person's privacy. Minimal risk of mental or physical harm. All that stuff has to be uh, minimized as much as possible. And at the end of the study, or at least at the end of when that person is being used in the study, if it's a long term thing, participants are told the purpose and provide um, a means of contacting researchers for the results. So if you take part in a psychological study, and really most other studies, you are actually entitled to a study or to a copy of the research. So, so you know what you had uh, contributed to. Um, and this is also around the time where if there's ever any lying that has to be taken take place, like, for example, if they're doing a study involving, like they had to re, if they were going to redo the Milgram experiment, for example, um, eventually they would have to be like, look, we lied to you. We're not, you were not giving electrical shocks. In reality, this is what we were trying to study. In the case of the Milgram experiment, they were, you know, studying, would they continue giving those electrical shocks? But this is... Again, this is when all that stuff would be kind of brought out for any subjects that are participating within a study. But and yeah, these are this is kind of the short list of um, kind of the ethical guidelines that are in place within psychology and also most other forms of uh, sciences as well whenever they're doing kind of research. Because again, this is a way to make sure that the science and the study and the research does not go off the rails. Uh, the Milgram experiment, some people have said, yeah, that one went a little off the rails. The Stanford prison experiment, that had to be shut down early because it went out of control. And then there's many, many stories involving like when the Nazis were doing um, psychological research in the concentration camps where they would do like horrible things where they would take like a twin of... Uh, you know, they have two twins. They would take one twin and quite frankly torture the hell out of it. And the other twin would be put in like, you know, nice, wonderful situations. And the whole purpose of the study was, does the twin that's living the good life, does he feel the pain and suffering of the twin being tortured? And then again, true story. But again, these are those types of guardrails that are put in place to keep something like that from happening. And yeah, that pretty much wraps it all up. Peace out.